YouTube, it's Estelle, and welcome back to my channel, Live Your Life Like It's Chocolate. Um, I haven't posted a video in a couple of days, only because I just haven't really had a whole heck of a lot to say or talk about. Um, I'm really going to try and change that, because I really want to start talking about things, uh, good things, positive things, but I also want to start getting out and exploring and posting some of those videos also to my channel. Um, I told you in my last video that I really want to try and um, think outside the box and explore new things in my area and do things by myself. Um, one of the th and and that's a, a a scary thing for me, and so I'm try I I need to get out and try and do that. I've been putting it off because of my fear of doing things by myself or alone. But um, I'm gonna. I'm really trying to work on that really, really well, and it's. Uh, I'm having a little trouble, but I'm. 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 Got to work on it. It's. It's something that I really am passionate about to do, um, because I really would love to be able to one day, be able to go places and travel and explore and vlog those things. I mean, that is one of my things on my bucket list and my goals for this for this channel. Um, but today, um, I'm posting, um, not about anything specific that happened during the day. It's just today is the two year anniversary of my brother passing away. And although it's a sad day, um, but I've tried to focus today, not on how my brother died or the last year or so of my brother's life and how ill he was, but I'm trying to focus on um, his life before then, growing up, when we were younger, um, you know, his life and uh, the friends he had in his life. My brother was never married. He didn't have any children like myself. Um, you know, he had a few girlfriends in his life, but um, nothing to the point where you know, um, let's get married tomorrow. I mean, he was engaged once, but, um, that didn't work out, but, um, so I, I wanted today to be more about the positive life, positive side of my brother's life. He was the type of person that made friends so easily, um, so friendly. Um, he would see you and, let's say on a bus and within 10 minutes he'd be talking to everybody joking around my brother had a really great sense of humor I on the other hand am very quiet and shy and introverted and my brother was not like that at all at all and I always like to tell the story that when I was born you know we're 10 years apart and when I was born, he was 10, and I like to tell the story that he ran away from home when um, I was born, and he ran away from home because he wanted a brother, not a sister. Sisters, yuck. <laughs> and so that's the funny, first funny thing about my brother. I mean, he was upset that I was a girl, but not a boy. <laughs> And as we got older, you know, when I was four, he was 14, so he was already a teenager, and he didn't want to have to babysit his four-year-old bratty sister. Um, for whatever reason, when I was younger, I cried all the time. I have no clue why, but I did. I cried a lot. And um, my mother used to say, uh, Bruce, you know, when you go outside, take your with your friends, take your sister with you, and he'd be like, "Oh, mom, do I have to watch the brat?" You know, that was when I was four. That was my nickname, the brat. Or, "Mom, the brat's crying again," or, uh, "Ma, the brat fell and she's crying." You know, that kind of thing. When I was nine, my brother was nineteen, and. I don't know if I should tell this story, but I will anyway. He, 
I was, um, my mother was working at the time, so was my dad. And so um, my mother asked me when I got home from school that day, she had put some towels on the washing machine if I could, I mean on the dryer, if I could put them away in the closet, in the linen closet. So I did. And when I put them away, I found that my dad had a dirty magazine. And I was looking at the pictures. And this was in the early 70s. I would think it was 1971. And I remember going, oh, gross, what is this? And my, I mean, I was like having a scream fest. And my brother comes in and goes, what are you carrying on about? So I showed him the magazine. And I'm like, what is this? Because I had no clue at nine years old what sex was. My parents did not have the talk with me, you know. And I didn't even, at that age, know that a vagina was a vagina. I don't think that my mother, I mean, I don't even remember what my mother called it. I don't remember. <laughs> and I didn't know anything about a penis. <laughs> I knew a boy's had separate parts from me. But I didn't know what the official biological term was. So my brother comes in and he looks at the magazine. He's like, ah, that's just a dirty magazine. That's people having sex. And I'm like, what sex? <laughs> I, I mean, I knew sort of, but I didn't know what it entailed. And he goes, well, mom and dad do that. I'm like, ew. He goes, that's exactly what I want. I went, ew. <laughs> and he goes, well, how do you think you got here? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I don't know how, how you do sex. And so he kind of explained it to me. And he's showing me the magazine and he's showing me, you know, the man's penis and the vagina. And, you know, he's explaining it. And I'm again going, ew. <laughs> That's, ew. I still remember this to this day. It wasn't funny then, but it is so funny now when I think about it and I reminisce about it. So he goes, he goes, um, and I go, Mom and Dad do that? <laughs> and he said, yeah, Mom and Dad do that. He said, adults have sex. And I go, you have sex? <laughs> I mean, it's so stupid when I think about the questions I ask. And he goes, yes, I have sex. And he goes, when you get older, you know, when you're more than likely in high school, you're going to start to you know, have those feelings and you're going to, you know, go through pu what they call puberty and you're going to want to do it too. And I remember distinctly saying, I am never, ever doing that. <laughs> I distinctly remember saying that. He goes, yes, you will. He said, everybody goes through puberty. Everybody, when they get to be older, has sex. They like sex. They want to have sex. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. And he's like, and so of course he was like, oh, brother, <laughs> you know, so I didn't have sex when I was in high school. I mean, I wanted to, but I never had any boyfriends per se that, you know, or any guy that was interested in me, interested in me in that way. I was interested in guys that way, but they were never interested in me. It wasn't until I was in college and off to, you know, four year university where I met my first serious boyfriend and we had sex and but I still remember that story about my brother and every time I think about it I laugh my you know what off because I I laugh more so about not just about my reaction but I laugh about his reaction because I have no clue what he was thinking in his head probably was saying to him oh typical typical brat oh my god you know why do I bother you know that kind of thing and um, so, you know, my brother had, like I said, the greatest sense of humor. He was always joking around. Um, he wanted to be, when I was younger, he wanted to be a disc jockey. So his friends started calling him, um, and there's a comedian by the same name, Cousin Brucey. And he wanted to be a disc jockey. And then... I don't know what he wanted to be after high school. He went into the Air Force. and um, But he always was able to make friends so easily. 
I remember him, he was in the Air Force, and my mom and I, we flew out to California. Um, I was 14. I was about ready to start high school. And we went up to visit him. No, he came down to L.A. We were in San Diego with a visit, staying with my aunt and uncle, my mom's brother. And he came down to L.A. And so we went to the Universal Studios tour. And at the end, and I know when I explain it, it's probably not going to sound funny. And I wish I had a video of it because at the end of the tour back then, um, you went into this small soundstage area. Oops. And um, you, uh, where we were, there was a trolley car. And so the guy who was the, the tour guide said, I need a volunteer to run the trolley because they were going to be doing a, like a mini scene out of a movie. So, of course, my brother volunteered. And um, then the guy said, well, we need a, you know, a few volunteers. So a few people volunteered. And then the guy, the tour guy said, I need one more person. So, of course, my brother volunteers my mother. My mother was mortified. She was mortified. She was so embarrassed. But she went up there. She was a good sport. She went up there. And my brother played the conductor. And the scene was that they were going to run off the track and crash. And my mother was the um, hysterical woman that she just, you know, fell into the guy's lap and, and collapsed and faded. And the guy said, you're going to be the hysterical, nervous woman. My brother said, oh, that's typecasting. <laughs> oh, my God. Such a such a funny memories with my brother. Um, so many things that I, so many memories I can't even talk about. It's just f so hysterical with my brother and his, you know, um, his sense of humor. My mother had a really good sense of humor also. And they would sit, whenever we would go anywhere, they would sit in the front seat and I would sit in the back and, this is how quiet I was back then. Sometimes we'd be driving and my mother and brother would be, you know, yuck, yuck, yucking, talking, you know, like two hens a cackling. And all of a sudden my mother would go, Estelle, are you back there? <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, where else have I, where else have I, where else would I be? And she's like, well, you haven't said a peep. I thought maybe you fell out of the car. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but I miss them both so much. And you never know, you know, what you have until it's gone from your life. And um, there's nothing like a brother or a, another sibling in your life. And I don't have any other siblings. It was just me and my brother. And, of course, there's nothing like your mother. And I guess what I'm trying to say after this long video is just to love your family appreciate your family. They may drive you crazy sometimes, but they're the only family you're going to ever have. And when you lose your a parent, it's a loss that is really tough because that's the only mother I'm ever going to have in my life. And she's gone. And if you are out there and you're not getting along with your mother, um, I'm telling you right now to change and appreciate what your parents do for you. They may not always encourage you or they may not always support you, but they're still your parents. And a lot of times, you know, parents may not be the best in the world, but they're still your parents. Um, I don't know what it's like to have a mother or a father who may have abandoned somebody or um, is mean or have been abusive. I, I can't speak to those kind of parents, but I'm speaking to the people who have pretty good parents and you are maybe annoyed by something your mother did or you got grounded or whatever the case is or maybe your parents didn't want to loan you money or they took away your iPhone or whatever. They're just being parents. They're just being parents. And their job is to make sure that when you become an adult, that you are a functioning, kind, good adult who
who can make decisions for their life. And that when you get out into the world, you know how to, you know, you're not going to screw up your life. That's their job, to keep you safe and to give you uh, insights as to what it's to be adult and to, to mold you into a good adult where you're not going out and killing people or robbing people or stealing things, that you're out and you're getting a job, you're working, you're paying your bills and that kind of thing. So if you have an issue with your parents, no matter what it is, try to look past something that they may have done that you didn't like. Because one day, they're not going to be around. And if you don't come to terms with those things, you're, 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 you, you don't think you will, but you will have guilt when that time comes. Appreciate what you have. Appreciate your parents. They're not perfect. They're human beings just like you are. They make mistakes. And to be honest with you, parenting, in my view, even though I am not a parent, but in my view, parenting is the hardest job in the world because you don't get training for it. It's pretty much on-the-job training for all your life. And you're a parent from the moment you give birth to the moment you die doesn't matter if your kids are 18, 30, 40, whatever age, you are still a parent. And your parents are still going to be concerned about you. They're still going to worry about you. And yes, they're still going to try and tell you how to live your life. But that's, that's being a parent. Because they have seen things that you haven't seen. They've lived through life. They've lived through things that you haven't lived through yet. They've already lived and been a kid and a teenager and a young adult. So they know mistakes are sometimes made. So And they can see things you can't. Trust me, I know. I've been there with my own parents. I know. And to be honest with you, at my age, I realized, I realized a long time ago that I should have listened to my parents for a lot of things. And I did not. And so now I'm paying the price for those things. So anyway, love one another and be kind. And um, please like and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.